Okay, so today we're going to talk about narrative writing, and, and we talked about this before when we talked about all the different types of writing. But if we look back to this box, narrative writing are personal essays, emails, blogs, reflections, and reviews. So moving on to talking about narrative writing in general, often the word narrative is synonymous for the word story. So that's important to know. A narrative is basically a story. Fiction or nonfiction, it can be real or fake. Sometimes there's a narrator who tells a story, and sometimes there's not. This is kind of corny, but you are the narrators of your own life at all times. When something happens, you go to lunch, and then you tell people about what happened. You include the specific details to help these people or the people you're talking to understand exactly what happened in the story. So just like a reporter, you narrate what happens. So why why write narrative? Well, Narrative writing is important to day-to-day -day life because you need to be able to relay information to people in a way that makes them completely understand using those five senses. Um, so your five senses are taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing. And when you write narrative writing, you have to be able to appeal to those five senses when you write. Some strategies that we use for narrative writing are using metaphors and similes, sensory words, and dialogue. So knowing that those are the strategies for narrative writing um, will help you become a better narrative writer. Okay, so when you use metaphors and similes, instead of saying, I was cold, because that's very bland, you could say, the cold air attacked my skin like a thousand little needles as the numbness covered my body like a coat. That gives you a much better visual representation of how cold somebody is. The next one, using sensory words. Instead of saying something like, the car crashed, you show, don't tell. So the, like it would be like this. The car jolted and a loud boom was heard as the tire screeched across the pavement and the smell of smoke filled the air. So it's just more in depth and it's reaching those five senses when you're writing. When you use dialogue, it even further makes your writing more real to the reader. Instead of saying, well, she was mad, you could say, I hate you and never want to see you again were the last words she ever spoke to me. So it just makes it more realistic when you use dialogue and sensory words and metaphor and similes in your narrative writing. Okay, so you guys are gonna write a narrative essay, one page, but it's gonna be very personal. It's gonna be have to be about a topic that happened to you or something that happened to you, an event, and then you have to take that event and pick one hour of that event and write about it in great detail. I've done this to show you an example. So here's mine, just to kind of give you an idea of how to take such a really large event and bring it down to that smaller time frame. Most people have experiences that change them. Sometimes these things are called defining moments. These are the moments when your memory seems to preserve every detail from the way things looked, where you were, how you felt, and even how things smelled. These are the memories we do not have to search for, and sometimes they come flooding through our minds at the worst possible times. As for me, forgetting is not an option. I woke up to the sun beaming on my face, which was unusual since it was a typical, typically still dark when I got up for school. My alarm clock was flashing, as it does when the power comes, goes out and comes back on, 4.10 a.m. I grabbed my phone to check the correct time, which unfortunately for me read 8 o'clock. I don't think I ever jumped out of bed so quickly. I threw on some clothes that were laying wrinkled on the floor and stopped briefly to look at the mirror at how I would be appearing to my classmates today. Great, I thought sarcastically, as my reflection showed the makeup I'd forgotten to wash off from the day before and hair that would be put in a messy bun due to the lack of time. 
Maybe Robert will be sick today and he we can avoid him seeing me like this, I thought to myself. I can only be so lucky. I quickly grabbed my keys and shuffled out the door to my car. I noticed the cross hanging from my mirror and remembered the words Grandma spoke to me as she hung the cross there. Always wear your seatbelt and drive with caution and care. I slipped on my seatbelt, turned up my favorite radio station, and quickly but carefully drove to school. I ran to the main office entrance and began explaining to the less than friendly secretary my excuse for being late. I know I'm late. I'm so sorry. Can I please? But before I could finish, Mrs. Mowbray stood up and hugged me. And she said, it's okay, honey. I understand. I'm sure it's been a rough day for you. I was confused. This was the same lady who I'm certain has only smiled twice in her whole life. And now she's hugging me because I overslept. Yeah, it has been, I guess. Can I get a late pass? She finally released me from her grip, and huge tears were rolling down her eyes. Are you sure you want to go to class? You can stay here if you'd like. I seriously could not wait to tell Megan about this encounter. No, I think I'll go now, as I slid out the door to make my way to history. My eyes met the sign that read room 112, and I grabbed the cold handle to open the door. I assumed that Mr. Roper would be standing at the front of the room, talking about World War II and its effect on the U.S. economy, while everyone did their best to keep from falling asleep. But, to my surprise, that was far from what was happening. Looking back, I would have done anything to be drifting in and out of sleep to Mr. Roper's voice on that very day. Instead, the entire class was crying. At the front of the room was Principal Williams, Mrs. Smith, the counselor, and Mr. Roper, and a person whom I did not know. When I entered the room... I felt a cold draft on my skin, and goosebumps appeared on my arms. Everyone in the room turned and stared at me in silence. I rapidly scanned the room with my eyes and found where Megan was sitting. I tried to get her to look at me, but her eyes would not meet mine. I looked to the back of the room where Robert and I usually sat and passed notes every day, but he wasn't there. Stephanie, could you come out into the hall for a minute? I heard Mrs. Smith say, before I could even respond, the tears began welling in my eyes. I felt a lump forming in my throat, and I knew what she was going to tell me. Robert, I whispered with a little bit of energy I could muster. Let's go in the hall, she said. It was then that I knew. Though much time has passed since I lost him, I still think about what might have been. I wonder if we would have stayed as close as we were. I wonder if he would have went to college or gotten a job out of high school. I wonder if he would have made it to all 50 states or if he'd bought a motorcycle like we always talked about. I'd never lost anyone before I lost Robert, but I have lost people since. Death is never easy, but I learned that things happen unexpectedly, and it's important to cherish the memories we have with our loved ones. Whew. So, notice how that basically is like a large event, and I take it down to a really, that, that moment, right? That, when I found out. So, that's what you're going to be tasked with doing. 